if you were going to say what got you to be the point you're at right now, how did you how did you come how did you become who you are today? What got you to be who you are versus somebody that was born on the same street you were born on, mm -hmm. went to the same school you went, when you guys graduated from high school, you all went out the same door into the world, and they're maybe working at a 7-Eleven or a factory or maybe not at all, and here you are, world famous, mm -hmm. and you, you have a healthy marriage with beautiful children. Why are you where you are and they're where they are? Choices. You know, I always say destiny is not a matter of chance, it's a matter of choice. This is what I chose to do. I, I chose to do radio. You know, I didn't have a college degree. You know, I didn't have anything else to fall back on. I was just looking to do something positive. You know, I was, I was selling crack. You know, I, I was in and out of jail. You know, I, I got kicked out of two high schools, you know, and I ended up graduating from, from night school. And I had to make a conscious decision to say, you know what, man, the po I got to create positive energy in my life because positive energy is what <clears throat> activates constant elevation. I actually use that as a, a acronym for peace. So I started working a bunch of odd jobs. I worked at a clothing store in the mall called Demo. I worked at a telemarketing place. I, I used to be the guy that would call your house and try to sell you 10 CDs for a penny. You know, I worked at um, a, a warehouse, a flower garden, Taco Bell, and I stumbled across the radio position because I used to want to rap like most brothers in the hood. Because a lot of times when you black and you from the hood, the people you see that are successful that look like you are either in athletics or entertainment. I mean, I'm only five, six. So, you know, the athletics thing wasn't going to work out, yeah. you know, <laughs> you know, do something different. Exactly. So I, and I saw so I thought <laughs> I wanted to rap. And I remember being at this recording studio and meeting a guy named Willie Will. And he was a local radio personality in Charleston, South Carolina. So I just asked him, I said, yo, how did you get in the radio? Cause that's, I'm, I'm an inquisitive person. Like I, <clears> even to this day, I like to ask a lot of questions, especially when I see people in positions or spaces that I would like to be in. And he was just like, I went down there and I got an internship and I was like, it's that easy. And he was like, yeah, and mind you, this is 1998 in Charleston, South Carolina, so the yeah. process was that easy. So that's what I did. I went down there, filled out the internship papers, and mm. I got my foot into the door of radio, and I, I didn't look back. I remember, you know, starting off <clears> as a regular <throat> intern, driving the station vehicles, you know, going to, with the jocks to put up posters and stuff at the different remotes. I would go get the jocks weed if they needed weed. And they really like to have me around then. That's when yeah. they start requesting you. Could you get make sure Charlemagne is, yeah. the, is driving us to this remote? Yeah. So I would always be around. And then like Willie Will would have me talk on the radio and the different the other personalities would be shouting me out. And one day the music director named Ron White, he was like, yo, you should be on the radio. You ever thought about being on the air? And I was like, no, but I am now. So they started letting me voice track uh, 11 to 3 on Sunday mornings, and then that turned into me doing my own shift 7 to midnight on Saturday nights, and it's just like I got bit with that bug. I was like, this is what I want to do with my life. Yeah. Like, I would do this for free, <laughs> and I have done it for free. Yeah. So you knew when you first got in front of that mic and started talking, you knew this feels right to me. A hundred percent. And you know it's so funny? I have a tattoo of Wolverine from the X-Men on my arm holding a microphone. I got this tattoo when I was like 17, 18 years old mm -hmm. when tattoos were illegal <clears throat> in South Carolina. And I knew that a microphone was gonna change my life, but I thought that that microphone s symbolized me rapping. But no, it symbolized me being a radio personality, a, a broadcaster, because a microphone is what changed my life. But I, I, I knew, I sat in that radio station and I listened to Tom Joyner and Doug Banks and I listened to Howard Stern. I, I started listening to old Frankie Crocker and Petey Green. And I said to myself, mm. if I'm going to do radio, I want to do it on that level. I want to be what they call a super jock. Like, I don't want to be a guy just, you know, doing the time and temperature and, you know, yeah. introducing the next songs on a, radio, a local radio station somewhere. Like, I wanted to be a personality in every sense of the word. And I didn't have any reason to believe that I could get there other than I believed. Like, that's it. <laughs> nothing more, nothing less. Yeah. Like, I can't even, because nobody else in my family mm. did radio. I didn't have any, anybody to look to and say, oh yeah, that guy was a radio personality, or that guy was a TV personality, like nothing. I had no reason to believe other than I believed. 